G'day from sunny Miami after the Miami Grand Prix, which was an amazing event, perhaps not for the racing, but certainly what went on behind the scenes was a mind bender. And I'll share my experiences with you in just a moment. From poolside here in sunny Miami, in my Miami shirt, I want to tell you about some of the stuff that I saw on the weekend, in particular the new paddock layout. Well, how does it differ from last year? This is what we had last year, hospitality suites all the way down a very small paddock. It's actually underneath the stadium. Well, this year they cleared out all that area, turned that over to hospitality, and then they moved all of the hospitality suites out into the center of the stadium. Now, this is normally a football field, so all of the team's suites were situated on the field. Now, this is green astroturf. It's incredibly hot. It's like uh, a reflector. And when that full sun hits it, it was pretty nasty. Oh, and normally, the hospitality suites are set up from one to 10, one being Red Bull and 10 being Williams. Now that's done normally so that the drivers have the shortest walk to their garage. But coming from the stadium, everyone was going virtually the same distance. So they put the teams all over the place, it didn't matter. And our media center had moved as well. And what it meant was that a number of corporate boxes, which are normally used for sport, were turned over to us. So I had, with Jace, my son, and uh, Michael Potts, we had this entire corporate box to ourselves. And this was one of the smaller suites. And what was our view like? Fantastic. Oftentimes we'd hear what was going on. In particular, when a driver came out, and this was particularly on Saturday, when the driver came out of their hospitality suite to go into the paddock or into the garages or vice versa, you would hear this huge roar from these people that were um, scattered around the stadium because they could go in to those seats and watch it. That was a great initiative on F1's part. And looking down onto the stadium paddock area, you'll see this spot down here, yeah, that's where we had lunch one day with McLaren. And uh, I gotta thank Karl Heinz Hauser for his hospitality. Uh, it was full up in the main area of the hospitality suite. So he set up a makeshift dining table for Jace and me to enjoy a magnificent meal. Let's jump back now to Quali. And one of the standout stories was obviously Kevin Magnuson putting his car in fourth position. Afterwards, he was met by his dad out the back of the FIA garage and a lovely moment here with the pair embracing. Do you remember that I gave Kevin Magnuson a whole lot of man-made 1821 beard products because I've rated his beard as the best in F1? Well, and look at this, I've got all of this top shelf grooming products for the aspiring gentleman delivered to my house. Look at this magnificent packaging. This is a three-in-one product, beard, hair, and body wash with a a real boozy flavour to it. This one's sweet tobacco. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Spiced vanilla. And this one's absolute mahogany. But how about the packaging? Isn't it lovely? And what about the shave solution? Yeah, I gave that a crack a little earlier on. And at the moment, you can save 20% if you go to 1821manmade.com and use the promo code KIM20, you'll end up with some beautiful stuff like this, magnificently packaged. I'll definitely use the three-in-one wash, but I'm probably not gonna be a candidate for the beard balm or the hair clay, but you might be, because these are professional grade products. I love the smell of them, I love the packaging, and I think you should get straight online to 1821manmade.com and get yourself an order real quick. I'll get to the celebrities in just a moment, but first I wanna talk a little bit about fashion and it was an absolute overload weekend when it came to fashion. Let me tell you, they had Tommy Hilfiger huge with Mercedes. Mick Schumacher looked almost like a walking billboard. He also had uh, George Russell in this particular Miami top, Tommy Hilfiger, and Lewis Hamilton came in four stunning outfits, a couple of them Tommy Hilfiger. What about the team principal, Toto Wolff? Did he get on board with the fashion stakes and Tommy? No, he did not. Uh, he was in his normal attire, coming in on a scooter one day with his lovely wife Susie uh, parked in the front. Haas driver Nico Hulkenberg was uh, certainly out there in the fashion stakes wearing Palm Angels. They are a sponsor of the team. And look, all of the media got one of these t-shirts, a Palm Angels t-shirt. It's beautiful material. Oh, and Gunter Steiner, was he in Palm Angels? No, but his wife Gertrude was and his daughter Greta. Alfa Romeo, or as some of the non in the know influencers called it, Alfa Romero, they had some Miami kit done up as well. Ferrari, yes, their drivers came in in a slightly different look, no collars on the shirts of the two drivers. Although on race day, Charles Leclerc came in in a magnificent Namius outfit, all in blue. And as he walked up the stairs to go into the hospitality suite, team boss Fred Vasseur was there and shouted out, it's Carnival. 
What about Pierre Gasly? Well, now that he's no longer tied to Alpha Tauri, he doesn't have to wear their clothes. So he wore some impressive outfits into the track. And I'll talk about his girlfriend, Kika, in just a moment. Now, let's talk celebrities. I have never seen so many in one place. And I knew it would be big, and it was certainly a lot bigger than last year. But I never expected what I saw on the weekend. And uh, a lot of you have said that you don't like the celebrity side of things. Unfortunately, this is the United States of America and a lot of this market is absolutely enamored in celebrity. Very early on, we had Vin Diesel. He came and did some stuff out on the track on the Thursday. He was looking ripped and very, very easy to get along with. He smiled at everyone, he stopped for selfies. I think he's a very good crowd pleaser when it comes to his fans. He was there on race day as well. Williams sisters, Venus and Serena, making quite an impact on the grid. And a lot of the stars would roll up just prior to going onto the grid because they all had grid passes. Yes, we had LL Cool J, Chris Gale, the legendary cricketer, Martin Garrix, the DJ, the Jonas Brothers. How about these two? And I didn't know these fellas. In fact, I'm half these people I don't know, I have to ask around. This is Jay Balvin. He has 52 million followers on Instagram. And this is Maluma with 63 million. So here you go, 115 million followers between the two of them. NFL star Patrick Mahomes was there along with his lovely wife Brittany. These matching outfits were very much the norm even amongst the general public at the track and there's a lot of competition to look spectacular in that paddock like Queen Latifah here, Ludacris, Roger Federer was on the grid and talking to almost any TV network that took the time to have a chat with him. Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer of Top Gun and other shows, he's doing the F1 movie with Brad Pitt and I understand Brad might be actually driving a car on track later in the year. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos was in the house. Kabe Lamy, he comes to a number of races and is very popular. Oh, DJ Khaled, he was absolutely on fire on Thursday in the stadium paddock, performing for his crew, and he had two or three people with him documenting his visit, and then he was back on race day. YouTubers Courage JD and Nate Shot were there. Now, a lot of you 18 to 34 year old males, and that is my primary demographic here, would know these two characters. Do any of you know boxer Joe Fournier? He was uh, well dressed. Fisher, the DJ, and Aussie. By gosh, he was absolutely on fire. You couldn't keep the man down. And what about this woman? Do you know her? No, how would anyone know her? Wearing a full face mask. That was bizarre. I'm not sure I feel too comfortable talking to someone wearing a full face mask. This is Michelle Rodriguez from the Fast and Furious movies. And what did you think of the introduction by LL Cool J to all the drivers? Let me introduce you to the 20 best drivers in the world. The thing was, when it was happening, I was on the grid. I was standing there. I was trying to listen, but you couldn't hear a damn thing. And unfortunately, we weren't facing the direction uh, that you were facing with the television. We were actually behind that. The whole grid was behind that. And they ended up um, wheeling that thing out afterwards. But yeah, lots of comments that it was very cringeworthy. As Fernando said, if it's that important, it should be done at all races. And if it's not, why only do it for the one or two American races they're probably planning to do it? Let's move on to the wives and girlfriends. Who was in attendance this weekend? Well, we had Kelly Piquet, Max Verstappen's girlfriend. George's girlfriend, Carmen, was there, dressed by Dior. We had uh, Tiffany Cromwell with Valtteri Bottas. Nico Hulkenberg brought his wife along. Sunny Egle. And look at this, she crocheted me a bucket hat. Thank you, Egle, or Sunny as she's better known. Lily He was uh, with Alex. And finally, this young lady, a 20 year old from Portugal. This is Francisca. And she was with Pierre every single day. They are an enormously popular couple and exceedingly well dressed. And Pierre's fashion, I thought on the weekend, was a standout. Oh, and Kika's dad also works at F1. He's one of the expert hosts and also manages some F2 drivers, I believe. A lot of you sent me notes saying, what is the best place to go to meet drivers? Well, really, unless you have paddock access, you're probably not gonna get to see them at this track. However, if you do wanna see them drive in, I can tell you they all enter via gate 11. And I'll tell you more in my Drivers Drove video later this week about what they drove and how they actually got into the track. This track is unlike any other in so much as the podium is not in pit lane. It's on the other side of the Hard Rock Stadium. At the end of the race, the drivers come out of the FIA garage. They're put into a buggy and Max Verstappen had his name stickered on his and that's obviously done just after they work out who the race winner is. And then they are scooted across the stadium where they are presented to a very large crowd of enthusiastic people. And I must say that Fernando Alonso is really making the podium ceremonies something special these days. I know he's only third, but it's like he's won his first race. He's jumping up and down and truly 
enjoying the moment. And he also makes a habit now of dropping the empty bottle of Ferrari sparkling wine down to his crew below. I'm sure that will continue, unless of course someone gets uh, hit on the head or the bottle breaks. And did you notice too that people were booing Max in the crowd? And that's what often happened with Lewis, he would get booed. Uh, I guess that's probably a lot of the Checo supporters who were hoping that Checo would win, but I think it's a pretty ordinary look when a, a driver who is clearly a standout driver is booed just for being so good. Now see this fella, do you know him? He's an IndyCar driver. This is not Pato Award, this is Alex Palau. And Alex was sitting on the pit wall at one stage and the commentators made mention of the fact that, oh, there's uh, Pato Award there and they look a little bit alike and they're both often seen in the papaya McLaren shirts. The thing I love was that Pato Award put up an Insta post reasonably quickly saying, hey F1, wrong guy. And in fact, I'm doing a signed print collaboration with Pato Award this coming weekend in Indianapolis. And if you're a Pato fan and you'd like to get hold of one of these hand-signed and hand-numbered prints and you get a digital picture of him signing your particular print, go to kimelman.com now, look at the shop, click on it and order your print for signing this weekend. It was great to see Roman Grosjean back in the paddock commentating. He's a Floridian now and even has his pilot's license. But wait till you see the shoes he was wearing on Sunday. I'll feature that in my upcoming Shoes of the Paddock post on Instagram. Nice to see ex-Williams boss Jost Capito in the paddock. And he was very relaxed and very chatty and a thoroughly enjoyable to spend a few minutes with. And just before I go, I can tell you right now that I've never seen more Rolexes in my life out and about, not in a store, than I saw in Miami. And every second person was wearing one and some spectacular watches. And once again, as I mentioned in my Watches of the Paddock post on Instagram, not all of them are on the right time, very few are on the right day or date. And this one here, worn by Patrick Mahomes, he hasn't even screwed the crown in. Beautiful watch, hard to get, but uh, quite amazing that uh, people actually don't use them for telling the time. Oh, and Lewis was also wearing a yet to be released IWC Big Pilots Watch. With that said, I'm going to thank 1821 Man Made for uh, sponsoring this video and thank you for getting through to the end of it. If you've liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so. Are you a member? You should become a member. There's a whole host of extras. For all of my digital images, go to ProStarPix.com for some beautiful wall art, photo books, merchandise, and those signed prints. Go to KimElman.com. And for my best images live from the track and during the week, Go to Instagram and search my name at Kim Illman, Kim with a Y. Thanks for watching. And stay passionate. What's going on? <laughs>